Full special report on the LeBaron cult later in the program. But first, a look at how mind control can be used toward a different, more benign end. There are people who claim to have harnessed a deep inner energy that allows them to perform superhuman feats. Scientists are at a loss. They can't explain the source of these mysterious powers. It's not a phenomenon exclusive to the West. In almost every culture throughout the world, there are people who appear to have superhuman powers. How is it possible for these people to endure the excruciating pain of needles and rods? Where does the strength come from that enables this man to pull an airplane single-handedly? When we see these kinds of phenomena that we don't understand, uh, it's easy to call it magic. Once we understand it, we call it science. This is really important uh, that scientists do take a closer look at this kind of phenomenon. If even one person can do it, it shows it's possible. In Russia, we discovered a man whose superhuman abilities seem to be more than just the result of mind overpowering body. Valery Lavrenyenko is renowned throughout his homeland as a real-life Superman. He has abilities that go far beyond the bounds of what is accepted as humanly possible. Sighting's first encounter with Lavrenyenko was at the Moscow Aquarium, where he tried to best his own personal record by holding his breath underwater for 15 minutes. He believes his startling abilities first began after a paranormal encounter as a young boy. During a summer break, when I was in the fifth grade, I was hiking with some of my buddies in a local forest. Suddenly, I saw a shining object that reminded me of a plane. I took off on my own and was drawn to the place where I thought it had landed. All of a sudden, odd shining stones were flying at me. I thought, run or you'll be hit. But it was too late. There was a powerful blow to my head and blood was pouring from a wound. For years it was a mystery to me until recently when information about UFOs was allowed to surface in Russia. Lavrinenko believes it was this experience that gave him his superhuman powers. Two minutes and ten seconds. Lavrinenko's constant companions are his wife Natasha and his son Edward. Sightings brought them to Moscow to meet with our team of doctors, investigators and researchers. Here they observe what appears to be electrical impulse coming through a heated needle in his forearm. The same energy also seems to flow through his finger and burn a newspaper. <laughs> It's coming out not from his nail, but from his finger, from the depth of his body. A burn like this can only be caused by electricity, and to explain this is impossible. Four minutes, 50 seconds. On the outskirts of Moscow, at the Central Train Depot, Lavrinenko agrees to demonstrate another feat of strength and endurance. It was hard for our investigators to believe that one man could pull a 30-ton train up an incline. But they were even more astounded to see how he planned to pull the equivalent of nearly 60 tons of weight. It was a feat no one in our team had ever witnessed. A warning. The following is not for the squeamish, and sightings cautions that no attempt should be made to duplicate this experiment in any way. <laughs> Using pliers, Lavrinenko inserts two 8-inch wires through his forearms and then attaches the wires to a rope that is connected to the train. At first, he is unable to move the train. The pressure on his forearm should rip the wires right through his skin, but the wires hold fast.
Despite the fact that he is pulling the equivalent of 60 tons, Lavrinenko barely bleeds, and the wires remain intact. This is not a trick. It's a miracle. From the standpoint of a surgeon, what just happened cannot happen with an ordinary man. When you injure soft tissue, there is always bleeding associated with it. When the metal rod pierces the soft tissue, like we've just seen, there is always extreme pain associated with that. And furthermore, there was 60 tons of pressure on his forearms. How all that's possible, I just don't understand. There are lots of documented cases of controlling bleeding through the power of the mind. Uh, that's probably one of the last great frontiers in medicine. Right? It's not just a matter of pain control, uh, but it's also a matter of controlling bleeding. All right? What kind of vasoconstrictors? How did he actually close off those blood vessels when that needle went through his arm? I think the place to start is honoring the phenomena Study the lack of bleeding. Study the electrical phenomenon demonstrated here. Study the ability of people to exist for long periods of time without uh, oxygen. There's enough contained in any one of these phenomena to force a, a reevaluation of how mind and body work. After nearly seven minutes underwater, Labrinenko began to surface. Although he didn't break his own record, for most people, just two minutes without oxygen could cause some brain damage. But Labrinenko emerges unscathed. Science always progresses like this. It's the, it's the odd example that one studies to find out what, what the boundaries of reality really are. That's how we, we paint the canvases and shred the old models, by studying the things that just don't fit in. Although Lavrinenko has performed superhuman feats that few, if any, can duplicate, the doctors and scientists that we spoke with believe that his powers are not his alone. They suggest that all of us have the same potential to control pain, endure physical stress, and achieve a greater degree of strength. In the future, we may all learn how to use our minds to unlock our full physical potential.